Multi-rotors, as you can see, I'm clearly quite obsessed. Uh, we have decided at Hobby King um, that it is high time that we gave you guys a complete guide to the KK2 multi-rotor board. Uh, as you know, the KK2 is kind of the definitive easy to fly multi-rotor board, easy to set up on the on-screen display. Everything is in here that you need to fly any of these copters you see here, the hexacopter behind me, any of that stuff. Now, I'm going to be building one of each and every type of copter that you can fly. Well, okay, not every type of copter, but all of the practical types of copter that you can fly. A dual, a tri, a quad, a little quad, a hex and an octocopter. I'm gonna build all of those. I'm gonna take you through tuning and setting up each of those copters with this board. Uh, and we're gonna go through that step by step. Now, a lot of that stuff's on the way and I don't have it yet. So bear with me as I wait for some stuff, but we are gonna get that going. I'm gonna show you how to use different kinds of receiver with the KK2 as well. Uh, and all the little secrets for updating firmware, etc. cetera. So uh, should be really cool. Stay tuned for that as we bring you more and more about the KK2 over the next coming weeks. Yep. Without any further ado, directly into part one here of the KK2 uh, complete guide. So, if you've ordered uh, uh, KK2, you've decided to take the multi-rotor plunge, you get one of these cute little foam packs, and in it is your board. Now, you're also gonna get a little speaker that you plug in for the voltage alarm, which is a cool feature of the KK2, it's built in. Um, so that's those two parts. Now. This board's been produced for about a year and a half and it has received continual firmware updates throughout that time. So one of the first things you're gonna wanna do when you get your KK2 and take it out of the box is verify and update the firmware. To do that, you're also going to need uh, this little guy, which is a USB ASP firmware updating tool. These are available on the Hobby King site as well. They're like six bucks, no big deal. Um, grab one of these to go with your KK. Uh, and also the driver for this is on the website. And you will need to download the KK Multicopter uh, firmware updater tool, which looks like this on the screen. Now, in order to find this guy, uh, you can just do a quick Google search. Quick Google search for KK Flash tool, and that will bring up the correct location, which is a German site called Lazy Zero. Uh, you go over to that site and you can download the latest version of the firmware updater. So go ahead and do that, Google search, download that thing, and you're ready to go. From there, uh, once you download the file and extract it into a folder, you can see this little pile of files here. The one you're gonna wanna run is the 32-bit version of the KK Flash tool. The 64-bit version is a bit buggy. So go ahead and run that and you should be good to go. Uh, that program, when you run it, looks like this. This guy will come up. Uh, there's a few options there that you will need to select. Uh, you will need to go in here and make sure that you're using the USB ASP adapter, and you will need to make sure uh, that you set your battery. Now, all this stuff tends to come up automatically when you install the software, so if you're using all of these components that you've purchased from Hobby King, you probably won't have to change any of this stuff, but do double check it. Uh, Hobby King KK 2.0 32K flash board right there. Uh, well, come on. Now, down below, you will see uh, a guide to the firmwares themselves. They're all down here. And as you can see, there's quite a list of available firmware for the device. Now, I will go into some more of these in detail, but for now, what I can tell you is if you're just going to build a basic quad or multi-rotor, you want to update this with the latest version of the sort of genuine Captain Cook KK2 firmware, in this case, version 1.6. Now, there are a few modified versions in here if you want to do other things, run a CPPM receiver, run a satellite receiver instead of the main receiver in the, in the uh, event that you want to do that. So you can do some of that from here and I will go into that later. But for this purpose right now, basic firmware update. Come in here and look for the version, in this case, KK 2.0 version 1.6 by Captain Cook. That is the latest version available for the board right now. So we'll click on that. That's the one that's going to be installed. If you click the little magic green button, uh, that will update the firmware uh, across the connector. So I'm gonna plug this thing in and run that and we'll show you what it looks like. I'll also show you what it looks like to plug the board into the device. So, board plugs in. It will locate and install the device driver in Windows. If that does not happen, the device driver for this thing is on the KK, or KK, the HK site at Hobby King. USB ASP is plugged in there. Uh, here is our friendly uh, device. Now, this thing, you can plug it in backwards. It's these, oh, I should be more specific, shouldn't I? It is these six pins right here on the board. So just next to the um, 
buttons in the LCD there as a group of six pins. That's where you're gonna connect the six pins on the end of your programmer here. Now, if you plug it in backwards, nothing happens. That's how you know it's plugged in backwards. <laughs> uh, it won't damage anything, it won't hurt anything, you're not gonna short it or fry it or anything like that. So, uh, turn it around and plug it in, and lo and behold, it lights up. Now, that as it flashed there, it said version 1.2. So, 1.6 being the latest, this has quite an old version installed on it. So we will set him on his little foam block there, uh, just for safekeeping. Come back over here to our programmer. Our device driver has finally successfully installed. And as I stated before, this little green running man button, uh, Schwarzenegger style there, is what you wanna click. Hit that guy and you will see here, flash from the firmware repository, and it does some stuff. It's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. It's found it, goes through its little deal, it's executing. And basically we just wait until it says it's done. And it's still waiting. It's still waiting. I love these music. That's all we need. You do one of these, right? Mm -hmm. So my father used to say, you could solo a helicopter. So this was part one, right? This is part two. And you gotta do them both at the same time. Now if you can do that, you can solo a helicopter. That's the plan. Whilst waiting for a KK2. Whilst waiting for a KK2 to write. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, it goes through, it gives you a little message indicating that it's done and it is finished. Uh, now, one thing you wanna do before you fly with this board again is make sure you recalibrate the accelerometers and things. I'll show you how to do that uh, in a further episode. But for now, that's it. This is now updated to the latest version of the firmware. And when we come back to the series, I'll show you how to do the very basic setup, how to select your copter uh, type and get your basic wiring done to get started. So we'll go on from there. See ya.